Welcome to Premium Cashflow Real Estate Investing Podcast with Sakar Kali. During this program, you will hear guest experts sharing their experiences, best practices, and market insights. We discuss investing in multifamily apartment complexes and how a busy professional can passively invest hassle-free in various opportunities. Your host, Sakar Kali, owns millions of dollars of assets and has done thousands of value-add projects over 20 years now. So listen in for insights. Here's your host, Sakar Kali. Welcome to another edition of Premium Cashflow Podcast. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, Dimitri uh, Fomichenko. Uh, he is with Sense Financial. Uh, Dimitri deals with a lot of uh, uh, real estate investors and he helps them set up the uh, 401ks, solo 401ks, and you know leverage those assets uh, you know in the real estate. Uh, he uh, represents a boutique financial firm uh, specializing in the self-directed retirement accounts with checkbook control. Uh, he began his career in financial planning and real estate investing in 2000. Uh, he himself owns several investment properties in different states and is also a licensed California real estate broker. Uh, so over the years, uh, Dimitri has uh, taught and helped uh, thousands of clients and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know, kind of having the conversation with him and delve into the details uh, about all of the things we are going to talk about. So thank you for taking time, Dimitri, today. I appreciate you coming on. Sure, Sakar. Thank you for the great introduction, and it's uh, great to be on the show. Awesome, awesome. Uh, g- help us get started, Dimitri, in terms of, um, you know, how uh, you kind of got into the financial side of things and then obviously married that with, uh, you know, real estate and helping a lot of investors. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, my, my story is kind of interesting. I, uh, uh, my, uh, as you can uh, hear from my accent, uh, I'm an immigrant just like you are sure. in this mm-hmm. beautiful country. What, what, what a place we live in. Eh? Absolutely. What, what a country <laughs> sure. uh, that mm-hmm. welcomes immigrants and gives us the opportunities. Uh, sure. I, I love the, this country. But So I immigrated here back in 1996. My background is in Electromechanical engineer, and that's what I went to school for. Got my degree. Interesting. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, I, uh, when I came in this country, I uh, studied English as a second language, mm-hmm. translated my degree, and worked in the field for several years until I got laid off. I see. Uh, mm-hmm. In the beginning of this uh, uh, century, mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, at that time, I started looking at other options. Actually, was recruited by uh, a financial firm and mm-hmm. started in financial services. I see. Uh, and mm-hmm. and uh, about a year or two prior to that, I actually got into real estate investing uh, mm-hmm. personally. Sure. Just uh, mm-hmm. purchased my first uh, investment property in 2001. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know, slowly continued to buy. Uh, and then um, uh, about uh, uh, four years later, I actually was presented an opportunity to work at a local real estate investment firm. And I jumped on that because being in financial services and just dealing with the just normal investments, uh, mm-hmm. uh, stocks and mutual, mutual funds mainly, sure. uh, I realized that uh, real estate uh, has much greater potential. Sure, sure. And so um, I basically transitioned uh, kind of full time in real estate and uh, working uh, was working with this uh, uh, local firm as an advisor, mm-hmm. and then. Um, uh, in about 2009, I uh, was given the opportunity to start uh, basically a department uh, within a company to set up self-directed retirement accounts. Because of my background in financial uh, mm-hmm. services, I, I knew, you know, uh, ins and outs of retirement accounts sure. mm-hmm. and uh, of my experience being a real estate investor. Sure. Uh, now, obviously, a self-directed aspect was new for me, so I... Mm-hmm. Uh, did my research and I met with the experts and started the department. And about a year later in 2010, I uh, ventured out on my own and I started Sense Financial Services. And our niche is uh, uh, help uh, our clients obtain control over their retirement accounts, actually obtain checkbook control. That is our niche. 
sure, uh, sure, that sure. is what we do. Sure. And I think it's, it's incredible that you share that. And I think not, not a lot of people can realize that they can write their own check uh, from their own IRA and, and, you know, given some stipulations uh, and, you know, kind of have that control amongst themselves. Uh, so maybe walk us through step by step, uh, Dimitri, as far as, uh, you know, what goes in the setup of these accounts and what are some of the uh, things that are kind of, you know, basics or perhaps what things we should follow to set these things up? Yeah, well, I think uh, we should begin by uh, defining what the solo 401k is. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, basically a solo 401k is a qualified retirement plan. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, th there is a, it's a niche. It's not for everyone. It's designed specifically for those people who are self-employed or own a business mm -hmm. without full-time employees. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, and that, that is a broad range of people, you know. Sure, and, and are, hence the term, basically, the solo 401k. Yeah, solo means... you alone by yourself. Sure. Yeah, so basically for yourself, uh, typically it's just a business owner, mm -hmm. perhaps a spouse of the owner, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, or maybe two partners. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it cannot have employees other uh, than uh, who are non-owner non employees. Sure. Mm -hmm. But if you do fit into that uh, criteria, then uh, it's, it's an awesome plan and... Uh, um, basically you can get set, set one up and it comes with some uh, great benefits. And, you know, if you'd like, we can dive into that. Sure, sure. Absolutely. And, and before we go uh, there, uh, Dimitri, um, can the existing 401k, like let's say if uh, folks have their past 401k at their jobs and things like that, can they be readily uh, sort of ported into a solo 401k? Uh, yeah. So the solo 401k will accept rollovers from any qualified retirement plan I with see. single mm -hmm. exception. And that exception is a Roth IRA. I see. Okay. Uh, IRS does not allow Roth IRA to be moved over to a 401k. Interesting. So if you have Roth IRA, you know, you, you can only go a self-directed uh, Roth IRA route, not a 401k, but all other retirement accounts can be rolled over. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, employer 401k. So if you if you currently working with uh, for the employer, if you have a 401k with the current employer, most likely you're not going to be able to touch that because they, they won't allow you to do so. Sure, if sure, sure, sure. But if you have a 401k with the past employer or any other retirement uh, uh, account sponsored by the employer, like a 403b or 457 mm -hmm. pension plan, you can move those uh, anytime. Solo 401k will accept those rollovers. I see, I see. Now, uh, Dimitri, what is the basis, uh, as you stated, that uh, Roth IRAs cannot be touched or roll over into this? Uh, what, is, uh, what is kind of the reasoning behind it? Well, uh, <laughs> a good question, but I, I don't think I can answer that. I, I can't uh, have the logic of the IRS and uh, sure. mm -hmm. I, I can't explain all of the rules. But, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the aspects is that the, the rules on the distribution is a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, from an IRA versus a 401k. Uh, but again, uh, I, I can't. I can't really answer that. The, the sure, sure, sure. For no, that's fine. That's fine. How about then let's go into uh, kind of how we can set this up or, you know, sort of what are the, uh, you know, uh, main benefits of having a solo 401k? Yeah. So the, 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 one of the main benefits of the solo 401k is that it allows for a, a large contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, with an IRA, the limit uh, for an IRA contributions is, uh, six thousand dollars sure mm -hmm. now if you have a 401k with your employer you can contribute nineteen thousand five hundred dollars into your 401k right but with the solo 401k you can contribute up to fifty seven thousand dollars a year awesome that so almost is like triple <laughs> yeah it's nearly 10 times of an ira sure six thousand mm -hmm. of an ira Fifty-seven thousand dollars of a four hundred one k solo four hundred one k. Now there is two components with the contribution to a solo four hundred one k because it's it's basically a four hundred one k slash a profit sharing plan. So mm -hmm. you can still do your nineteen five as mm -hmm. you will do at a normal four hundred one k if you had one with your employer. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you can do a profit sharing, which is I your see. business can contribute and combine maximum of the two is $57,000. Now, I see. those mm -hmm. clients who are over age of 50, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. they actually can contribute additional funds and that's additional $6,500. I uh, see. So the combined uh, uh, total uh, for a solo 401k for those over 50 will be $63,500. Wow, that's, so that's powerful. Mm. This makes it very powerful tax shelter. I mean, think sure. about this. Uh, if you're in a business with your spouse, Mm -hmm. and you, you both working on the business, you can potentially put over $120,000. You can oh, shelter see. that much of your income from taxes into your own retirement plan that you control. I mean, think about the tax savings and, and the sure. bottom line, because uh, I mean, if you're, if you're making that much, you're probably somewhere in a 30% tax bracket. If you shelter, you know, $100,000 from your income, you're probably going to drop into a lower tax bracket. Absolutely. So you'll Absolutely. be paying less taxes using a lower tax bracket. It, 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 tax savings can be huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, like what are some of the other benefits? Uh, you know, you mentioned that, uh, yes, uh, you know, you are, uh, you both uh, like husband and spouse can contribute and take their, uh, you know, contributions all the way up to 120 and things like that. But now let's say, what are other vehicles that we can invest in, like uh, the checkbook control aspect that you mentioned, right? Uh, so is that uh, built into it or is there anything specific we have to do for uh, yeah, so, having that? Yeah, so, you know, normally if you have, uh, if you open a retirement account with a, a custodian like Fidelity or Schwab or Merrill Lynch or Wells Fargo, they have limitations on the investments. They place those limitations. Mm -hmm. We set up the plan because we are not a financial institution. We don't hold the money. We don't invest the money. Mm -hmm. We just simply setting up the vehicle. Sure. So we, there is no restrictions on the investments. Mm -hmm. So it, it's considered an open architectural plan and you, you have unlimited investment options. Sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it, you know, the list of available options doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, giving you a list of uh, investments, IRS uh, gives you a list of things that you cannot do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you cannot do is you cannot invest in uh, collectibles. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, also you cannot engage in any transaction with disqualified person. And the disqualified person is uh, yourself, the, the client, mm -hmm. a spouse sure. of the mm -hmm. client, and then <clears throat> linear ascendants and descendants and their spouses. So your parents, grandparents, kids, grandkids, and their spouses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, an easy way to remember is a vertical line. Okay, So you cannot engage in any transaction with your immediate, immediate family members. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. So now, that, uh, uh, so uh, basically, the self-dealing aspect uh, is why I, I guess. The self-dealing aspect, correct, yes. Right, right. And Dimitri, what about, let's say, if, uh, you know, certain businesses are owned by uh, entities uh, whose uh, sort of, let's say, the membership is, uh, uh, you know, let's say the immediate family and things like that. Uh, is that also considered self-dealing or what, what well, is sort if of Well, if on? there is an entity involved and uh, one of those disqualified person is, uh, is the owner of the entity, that entity will be considered disqualified as well. I see. I see. Got it. So in your experience then, uh, Dimitri, uh, what are some of the powerful ways to uh, use this, uh, uh, you know, solo 401k with checkbook control uh, feature? Uh, are they more uh, relevant for like, let's say, passively investing or some other businesses and things like that? Well, uh, you know, retirement account should be invested passively. It's not something that you're going to you know, run an active business out of, but sure. should be passively investing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my clients, they're real estate investors. So sure. they invest in real estate. Now it's, it's very broad uh, term uh, sure. investing <laughs> in real estate. There's a lot of things you can There's do. A lot of real things yes. invested Absolutely. related, but uh, you know, it can be, you can just own a single family rentals. In sure. your 401k can be a great way to invest. Mm -hmm. You can uh, uh, invest in uh, in a large, uh, uh, deals, you know, large uh, uh, multifamily sure. apartment complexes like syndication, you can sure. invest in mm -hmm. the syndication mm -hmm. or you can invest in a self storage or uh, mobile home parks, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a similar concept syndication, just a sure. different uh, uh, property type. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, invest in uh, uh, precious metals. Mm -hmm. You can invest in cryptocurrency, you mm -hmm. know, bitcoins and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, 
probably uh, well not probably but my my personal favorite is uh, being a private lender and investing in uh, uh, trust deeds or, sure. or mortgages. Sure. That's so when you, you use your four hundred one k as a bank and you lend money to others. You know sure. that's how I personally invest mm -hmm. uh, my retirement funds. I think it's a it's an awesome way to invest uh, okay. because it's it's low risk. It's completely mm -hmm. passive and uh, nice returns. I, I usually get double digit returns on my loans. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's acting like as a uh, private uh, lender or private uh, hard money lender. You're yeah, just you're accessing. A your four hundred one k is a private lender. Yeah, uh, a bank essentially. Sure, sure. You sure. act as a bank. Sure. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> now speaking of. Uh, you know, let's say the returns that come with this, uh, Dimitri, uh, what are some of the tax consequences and things like that, that we should be aware of? Well, uh, remember that the solo 401k is a tax deferred vehicle. Again, mm -hmm. it's a qualified retirement plan, meaning it's tax deferred. Sure. So mm -hmm. when you do make investment inside of a tax deferred vehicle, mm -hmm. all the in gains from this investment and all the returns, uh, interest or uh, income otherwise that you receive is being sheltered from taxes. Again, assuming it's a, uh, it's a uh, uh, income from a passive investment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you invest in a, if you own a single family rental property, mm -hmm. that rent is being sheltered from taxes, you, you know, you know, cause it's, it's not your personal income. It's an sure. income of 401k. 401k is a separate sure. entity from you. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't, report that income on your personal taxes. Because sure. again, it's not your income. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't pay taxes on that. If you uh, uh, invest in a, in a, or do a private loan, mm -hmm. well, interest income that you receive from that loan, again, is being sheltered from taxes. It's the income of the sure. 401k. Sure, if you sure. invest in a syndication, at the end of the year, you're gonna get, well, during the year, you're gonna be receiving your payments uh, for your share. At sure. the end of the year, you're gonna get a K-1 issue to a 401k Sure. And uh, um, again, uh, you just file that. You, you, you file that, but you, you don't report that income. I see. I see. Got it. Uh, what, what are other some of the limitations, um, uh, you know, Dimitri? Because um, I heard something along the lines that unrelated business income tax, uh, UBIT as we call it, uh, that's not uh, applicable within solo 401k. You're saying that's, that's more into the uh, self-directed IRA. Would that, would well, that let's, be a correct uh, Yeah, that's a good question, Sakal. Let's break that down. Sure. So mm -hmm. you're talking about UBIT, unrelated business income tax. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, so it, it is a tax. Now, when does it apply? Mm -hmm. It applies when there, whenever there is a unrelated biz, uh, business taxable income, UBTI. Sure. Okay, that's the term. UBTI mm -hmm. stands for unrelated business taxable, taxable income. income. Sure. So let me give you an example. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, an IRA. So uh, an example is if you uh, buy real estate mm -hmm. using leverage. So let's say you buy a rental property for $100,000. You put $50,000 from your IRA. Again, I'm mm -hmm. using a, an IRA example. Sure, sure. Solo 401k with an IRA. Mm -hmm. So if you buy that uh, a property, you put 50% down and you, you finance the rest. By the mm -hmm. way, Mm -hmm. uh, you can finance the property in your uh, IRA or 401k, but you must use non-recourse loan. I see. Non-recourse mm -hmm. means there is a, 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 you don't provide a personal guarantee. Property is the only security for the loan. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when you do that uh, in an IRA, uh, uh, so basically half of the income will be considered UDFI, unrelated debt finance income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unrelated debt finance income is subject, subject to UBIT in an IRA. Mm -hmm. So if you finance a property, investment property in an IRA, mm -hmm. portion of your income that derived from the financed portion of the property will be subject to UBIT tax. I see. However, mm -hmm. 401k is exempt mm -hmm. uh, from UBIT on leveraged real estate. So specifically, again, let me repeat that. It's not it's not exempt from UBIT period. Sure. It's specifically <laughs> exempt from uh, UBIT on leveraged real estate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you buy the same property using your 401k, then uh, that uh, uh, income will not be subject to taxation. I see, now, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, let me further explain that uh, 
uh, when when it will apply. So uh, oftentimes I get this question: Can mm -hmm. I flip a property in my retirement account? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. remember we talked about disqualified person. So if you're sure. a disqualified person, you can't do any work in the property. Right. You cannot mm -hmm. provide any services to your plan. Mm -hmm. Now, you you could flip a property in your 401k, but flipping is considered an active business. Sure, it's so not passive start, by any means. <laughs> yeah, if you start flipping properties in your 401k or an IRA, then you know you actually run an active business. Right. You cannot do any work now. You can manage it. You can coordinate with contractors and painters and so forth. Uh, if you're a real estate agent, you cannot represent uh, mm -hmm. your 401k or an IRA. Mm -hmm. And then when you flip that property, when you sell it, mm -hmm. the, the profits that you're going to generate will be taxable, will be subject to UBIT, unrelated business income tax, right. in both, in an IRA and a 401k as well. Right, because you were doing active work uh, during the flip yeah, of so this. It's, uh... it's uh, income from an active uh, investment, sure. not, not a passive. Sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, how, uh, I mean, what's considered that uh, threshold of active versus passive? Like, for example, uh, how would we classify that? Okay, you were flipping the property. Is there like a seasoning threshold around, uh, you know, rental real estate that, yes, you have to hold it for like, uh, you know, eight months, 12 months, something like that. Is there any sort of a gray line or gray area around any of yeah, this? It's probably a, a good question to discuss with your CPA. My understanding is that, uh, you know, if you flip a property in less than a year, again, it's, it's, a, it's a flip. It's not a, sure. mm -hmm. you know, it's not a long-term hold. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you buy a distressed property mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you fix that up and then you put tenant in it mm -hmm. and, and you, uh, you know, rent it out for a couple of years and then sell it, then it's no longer a flip. Sure, sure. You know, it's, it's a long-term hold. And uh, in that case, your, your uh, uh, gains from the sale of the property as well as uh, all the rental income will be sheltered from taxes. Sure, sure. Now, another question I uh, commonly get, Dimitri, is that a lot of my uh, sophisticated accredited investors who are there, I mean, they're earning a lot of money. I mean, you know, sometimes you have, uh, you know, couples who are, uh, you know, well-paying and they are, uh, you know, uh, pretty much at the top of the bracket in terms of uh, their accreditation status and things like that. Um, is there any way that they can avail benefits of solo 401k? I mean, although they have a W-2 job, uh, you, as you can imagine, but are there any ways that they can set up a 401k, maybe perhaps have a LLC, which perhaps... Um, I mean, you know, for lack of a better term, it can be just a uh, small business or just a shell LLC and things like that, that helps them get solo 401k. Uh, are there any other ways they can uh, kind of use a solo 401k and uh, act as a tax buffer? Well, yeah, good question, uh, Sikar. The, you know, the first thing is that uh, with... Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, your question, somebody who has a uh, large W2 income, sure, mm -hmm. they cannot shelter that income into a 401k. That's, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. Now, they can qualify for a solo 401k and they can set up a plan. That mm -hmm. is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be just a shell LLC. It has to be a legitimate business. Sure. Actually, sure. it doesn't even have to be an LLC. Mm -hmm. All they need is a legitimate business activity. So if sure. you do have legitimate business uh, or self-employment activity, they can set up a plan. They don't need LLC mm -hmm. uh, to do so, mm -hmm. uh, but they can only make contributions to the solo 401k from their self-employed earnings. They cannot use their W2 w. income to contribute to a solo 401k. So I guess, again, they can, they can set one up if they have existing retirement accounts, like if they if they switch the job and they have, you know, few hundred thousand dollars in their old 401k mm -hmm. and if there is an easy way for them to become mm -hmm. or, or run some kind of a side business they can set one up mm -hmm. set up a solo 401k move the funds but they, they have to maintain that uh, uh, that business now uh, anybody who uh, has some sort of legitimate self-employment activity will qualify mm -hmm. you know it can be can, anything but it needs to be legitimate you gotta Sure, you got to sure. be in business to make profit and, um, you know, report your income. Sure, sure. Anything. 
Sure, sure. I mean, you know, I have had um, investor clients where, you know, they are having, let's say, uh, partnerships in some hotels and self storages and things like that. Uh, so although, you know, they are not like hyperactive, but they are doing, uh, you know, some semi passive type of investments, right? So and, and that's where the question stemmed from is that, uh, so you are basically emphasizing the mystery that the W2 income cannot be used uh, to uh, shelter uh, using your uh, solo 401k. It it's really has to come from the uh, other business activity. So that, that would be a no basically at that point, you're saying. Correct. Yeah, because uh, solo 401k is designed for self-employed uh, individuals. If somebody is uh, uh, just an employee W2, then solo 401k is not the right vehicle for them. They can utilize a checkbook IRA mm -hmm. and, and checkbook IRA can be used to, uh, to invest, but uh, not a solo 401k if they don't have any self-employment in place. I see. I see. So if, if we go further into it, Dimitri, as far as how they can use that checkbook IRA, uh, would that be just a typical setup that they are contributing uh, their W2 income in their IRA and using that uh, basically the checkbook Correct. feature? Correct. Yeah. As, as we mentioned earlier, sure. the limit on the IRA contribution is pretty small. It's only $6,000. Sure. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, if somebody a high income earner, they probably will not be able to, to take a deduction. Sure. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not big enough, I guess. Uh, yeah. But, uh, they, they can still contribute, set up an IRA and contribute an IRA or rollover and use an IRA instead of a 401k, which is still a viable vehicle. Like I sure. said, solo 401k is not for everyone. If, if you're the right person and, and fit into those criteria, it's, sure. it's a, it will give you great benefits. If you don't, you know, uh, maybe it's a subject for another show, which, <laughs> you know, I'll be happy to uh, come back and talk about checkbook IRA, which is again, uh, a viable uh, vehicle that uh, sure. will benefit the right uh, person. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, now, how have you used a solo 401k or maybe perhaps uh, your clients? Are, are there any success stories you want to share uh, that you, you have encountered, uh, Dimitri? Oh, gosh, let me see. I, I personally use my retirement funds to do private lending. Majority sure. of my uh, capital is invested in a number of loans out there. Sure. And I, I typically like to do uh, a long term land, uh, loans. Um, so, mm -hmm. typically between three to five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've done a few shorter, like two, two, for flippers or mm -hmm. two flippers mm -hmm. uh, that are under a year. But I, I prefer not to, you know, basically be uh, in the position that every year I have to look for another way to reinvest. That's why I like a, a longer term. Sure. Mm. Uh, so that's how majority of my funds invested. Yeah, I have, you know, a little bit of money invested in a private company. Mm -hmm. And then um, I actually um, uh, own two properties. Mm -hmm. And one of those was a loan. Uh, I made the loan mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to this private uh, uh, borrower. Mm -hmm. And uh, they end up defaulting and uh, uh, signing deed in lieu of foreclosure. So now I own the rental property. I see. So uh, uh, now is, meaning, I guess, you, uh, your IRA must be owning that. Uh, would that be a correct statement? Yes. Yeah. Not, okay. not me. My retirement sure. account. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, retirement account was the lender. Now retirement account owns the property. Sure. As far as my investor success, sorry, uh, I have... Uh, uh, clients invested. Uh, uh, one that comes up, they actually uh, purchased uh, a, a property in uh, Belize. Interesting. And uh, mm -hmm. their goal was basically they uh, they found a property that they liked. Mm -hmm. They secured that. It's an investment property. They don't, they don't use it personally. So it's rented out. Mm -hmm. Their goal is when they retire, they uh, want to move in there. But uh, it property will have to be converted to a personal. So yeah, they will have to take sure. the property out of a 401k. And you can do that mm -hmm. by using what's called the in-kind distribution. So rather than taking cash uh, from the 401k, you can take the property out. Mm -hmm. uh, property see. will have to be appraised. Mm -hmm. Again, it will be a taxable event, but then you can convert that uh, from the 401k to your personal, and then you can start using it at that point. I see, I see. Now, one fear I have uh, also, Dimitri, is that it's it's a mere tax deferral strategy, right? Um, how long can you defer that? Is that like till perpetuity, like typically as we talk about, or 
Uh, what are some of the taxable events that can occur into this? Well, uh, yeah, the, the uh, retirement accounts are tax deferred. Sure. Now, and if it is a Roth, then it's tax free. Sure. So if you're contributing to a retirement account before you pay the taxes, then, you know, basically you're taking your income and you're sheltering it from taxes. You're not sure. paying any taxes on the income that you contribute to right. the 401k that, you know, 57,000 we talked about. Sure. You, you, you're reducing your taxable income by right. that amount mm -hmm. and then you invest but eventually when you start taking distributions at retirement you will have to pay the taxes mm -hmm. and the amount that you you take out as a distribution not the whole thing mm -hmm. but the amount that you take out that will be taxable in the year that you take out sure, sure. and uh, uh, another strategy which is a tax-free uh, utilizing a rat and that's another benefit which we did not touch mm -hmm. Uh, but solo 401k uh, does have the rot component. It has a rot provision mm -hmm. built in in every plan that we set up, mm -hmm. and that allows our clients to to make rot contributions after tax. So you pay the taxes, and then you contribute. The limit is nineteen thousand five hundred, mm -hmm. and uh, for those people who are over fifty, mm -hmm. they have additional sixty five hundred. Uh, uh, cut shop. So it's actually $26,000 you can contribute into a ROD. I see. Uh, I see. And those funds, or uh, and, and one more, uh, is uh, you can also convert your pre tax money into ROD. So if you have some uh, uh, traditional IRA funds, you, if you choose to do so, you can convert that into a ROD. I see. And then mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, whatever you invest inside of a ROD account, Mm -hmm. It's going to be tax free for the rest of your life. Sure, sure, sure. So the, the, you pay the taxes upfront only on contributions. It's growing tax deferred, mm -hmm. and eventually all the growth is tax free because you never have to pay taxes on that. Right, right, right. Got it, got it. Thank you, uh, Dimitri. It's it's been insightful to you know hear uh, you know all the details. Uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, kindly share with our listeners how they can, uh, you know, find you, learn more about your company as well. Uh, sure. Probably the best way uh, will be to visit our website and that's uh, sensefinancial.com. You can see it behind me. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sense is like common sense, S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, uh, sensefinancial.com. You can uh, learn more about the, the benefits, about the, the features of the a self-directed checkbook IRA in a solo 401k. And then you can also uh, contact our office uh, or complete a form and request a complimentary consultation. Be happy to speak with any of your listeners uh, about the, their specifics and, and help them out. Incredible. Thank you so, so much, uh, Dimitri. I greatly appreciate it. And for viewers and listeners of the podcast, uh, they can also for, find and learn more uh, details uh, regarding our services at premiumcashflow.com. Uh, we pl have plenty of opportunities all the time. And we obviously have news articles and uh, expert guests like Dimitri who come on regularly and share uh, their knowledge. Uh, if anything is of uh, interest, kindly register yourself and we can always jump on a short phone call and understand uh, what your goals and motivations are so it's been a pleasure dimitri thank uh, thank you so much for your time today sakar thanks for having me thanks for listening to premium cash flow real estate investing podcast please join us at premiumcashflow.com to sign up for weekly updates research articles and more we will see you again for another great interview with an expert guest.